So every time I make these videos, they seem to do really well on the channel. So since you guys like these videos as well, it makes sense to make more. So I put out a poll on my channel to ask you which game you want to see one of these videos be made on out of three different games that I think would be good for this kind of video. And the results were actually surprisingly close, with Spider-Man only just winning it. And Spider-Man on PS4 is an amazing game. Spider-Man is just one of those characters that is just immensely popular. So having a game of that character and also have it be a really good game Game, it's just as a match made in heaven. So I'm going to make some predictions of some things we're going to see in these reviews, some nitpicks people might have. So first thing immediately, right, because it's a PlayStation exclusive game, automatically it's going to have tons of hate from people that love Xbox. That's just how it goes. It's the same the opposite way around as well. It works both ways. But I feel like we probably will see that in some of these reviews. Honestly, in terms of other stuff, I actually don't know what exactly they're going to nitpick at the game. The only major thing that I think deserves to be criticised about the the game or the MJ stealth levels because those did suck. Most boring parts of the game by far. So if people criticise that then fair enough but there's not really a lot more that I can think of. So I guess we're just going to have to go see what they say I guess. So the game actually has the exact same score by critics and users which is really fucking rare to be honest. So we got the user score distribution here. Seems about right. A lot of positive reviews and then just under 400 negative ones and 572 mixed. Let's see what's some of these reviews say. Let's see if they sway my thoughts on the game. You know, I'm, I'm sure they'll come in with some really impactful points about why this game is not good. All right, first one, this guy gave it a four. And just from a first glance, I can see where this is going. He has a pros list that seems really small, doesn't go into much detail. And then the cons list is like a whole fucking shopping list of shit. Looks great, okay? Fair. Controls are very good. Not great. Not infamous great. I, I don't know about that one. To be honest, I think the controls are pretty good in this game, but... And the third positive, lots to do. That's it. It doesn't go into any detail at all about, you know, what you can do in the game or what's good about it. Just lots to do. Cons. Now, this is where it goes into extreme detail. Repetitious and banal. Immediately, the vocabulary. I've never heard this word in my life. So lacking in originality as to be obvious and boring. Right. Repetitious and banal. Grinding side quests and puzzles. I mean... I will say, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of the puzzles, but even if you do hate the puzzles that much, you know, when you're in the lab and everything and you're doing like the science experiment things, there's literally an option to just skip them, you know, if you really hate them. I was tired of this combat system at the end of Batman Arkham. I don't need to play it again. That is an interesting take on the combat in this game. Most people would praise this game for having similar combat to the Batman Arkham games just because of how good the combat was in those games, while also having having its own elements to that combat. This guy's went with the complete opposite side to that and went, I've played it too much. You know, it's too repetitive. So I guess he just plays Batman Arkham all day. I don't know. He's put quick time events with three exclamation marks, so it's serious. I mean, yeah, you know, quick time events aren't amazing. I'm not a big fan of them myself. But at the end of the day, it's not really that big of a deal. If there weren't quick time events, you would just watch a cutscene instead. So control is great when it's great, but when it's not, it's frustrating. I mean, you could really say that about any game, to be honest here. You know, when controls are great, they're great. But when it's not, when it's not, man, was Spidey always this annoying? Look at little Goblin Jr. Gonna cry? <gasps> It's a game, not a comic. When you read a comic or watch Spidey and know in advance what's going to happen, it's bad enough. But being forced to help Doc Otto become Doc Octopus, like you have no idea where this will go, is surprisingly really frustrating. I did not feel like that at all. Like, I knew what was going to happen. Most people that know Spider-Man as a character and know Dr. Octopus know exactly where the story was going in terms of him. The thing is, he's not the biggest part of the story. There are other villains in it as well. I don't think it was done badly in this game you know i think you kind of connected with doc ock before he changed and became this villain and that's what really makes the ending of the game so good i won't spoil it just in case someone has not played it but the ending of this game is really good and it's mainly down to doc ock on peter's friendship nothing done here hasn't been done better in another video game i don't know Matt. i think the web slinging alone and the movement in the game we're getting around the city i don't think that's been done better in other than any other video I, I don't think so anyway unless i'm wrong 
wrong. I mean, the original Spider-Man 2 done pretty well at it. It was pretty groundbreaking for its time and kind of paved the way for this game and its web-slinging mechanics and all that. But that's about it. In terms of other things, I mean, a video game doesn't need to do everything better than every other game to be a good game. It doesn't need to reinvent the wheel, just like any other parts of media. I think having that kind of mindset is pretty restricting, to be honest. If you go into the mindset of what you're doing needs to be better than everything else that has been done, how are you supposed to even attempt to put it out? You'll just always be trying to perfect something that probably will never be perfected. How do the developers not play God of War and just shelve this? I I'm like really trying to figure out what he means by that. I I'm, I'm honestly like, I had to take a minute there just to like try and think about what you try to say. I, I still don't know. Uh, they're completely different games. Maybe because they're both story games. I don't know. I have no clue. Overall, pretty good review though. I mean, there wasn't anything done in the review that was better than any other reviews I've seen, but all right, moving on. This guy gave it a zero. No redeeming qualities. Let's see what he says. I'm intrigued. Shockingly bad. The pacing makes no sense with text flying off the screen before you can read it. And I read really fast. And tutorial fights that kill you before you have a chance to try what you're supposed to be learning. Wait, what? This guy was dying in the tutorial fights? What? How? I don't remember the tutorial being difficult. Nah, man. He's got to be trolling. Then once you learn a move, you inexplicably can't use it in the very next battle. Is this guy just so bad at the combat? Firstly, dies in the tutorial fights, but then also forgets how to use moves that he's just learned? Travelling via web through the city was also ridiculous. What even is that sentence? This is a spider man game. What, how did you expect him to travel with his fucking spider car thing that he had in the comics? Like, oh, where's the, where's the spider bike? Of course he's going to travel by web, man. Come on now. I guess this guy just preferred fast traveling around the place and just going by subway. I don't fucking know. Things just happen erratically, no matter which button you press. A part of your brain tells you you just need to get the hang of it. But after 10 minutes, you realize there's nothing to learn. Just mash buttons and pretend you're controlling what's going on. I am actually convinced this is the first game this guy has ever played. It's got to be. Imagine this guy playing like Dark Souls or playing Elden Ring. He would cry. He would come up to the first boss and just just sell the game. You know, the, the tutorial boss. You, the, you'd get annoyed at that tutorial, quote unquote tutorial. Two hours into it, I'm not ready to throw the game across the room, but close. <laughs> right, that, you know what, that was, that was a decent way to close that review, I'm not gonna lie. I think more people should review games going off of how much they want to throw the game across the room. I think that's actually a good basis. I will support anything the studio does. There are no microtransactions for cosmetics. It really felt like I was living the life of Spider-Man. I think that was a big part of the immersion. Yes, there are some down times with the stealth sections but they are so small. The graphics are insane. I love the puzzles and swinging around the city. Helps me relax after a long day at work. Probably the most accessible game ever made. Great job Insomniac as always. Zero out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I think he forgot a one in there. Incredibly overrated and overhyped movie license crap. Gameplay became boring after 10 hours. 10 hours? Bro, why are you playing a game you hate for 10 hours? What's going on? Are you being paid to play it or some shit? Incredibly overrated and overhyped. Realistically, it's a 7 out of 10. Gameplay become boring. Bro, you gave it a one. I, don't, I, think, I think you made a mistake there, man. I know if you like really squint your eyes. I know the one could maybe look like a seven a wee bit, but you made a bit of a, a, a oopsie. I just love games and Spidey is my favorite character ever. So when you put them together, it be perfect. My note, 10 out of 10. Zero out of 10. See, a lot of these reviews that are like zeros or ones or around that area, they're actual mistakes. A good majority of them are just complete mistakes. They love the game, but they just rated it a zero by accident. They forgot the one, basically. Even the review directly below this one does the exact same thing. Like, is I don't know what's going on here. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it's the same guy. Alright, this guy gave it a 4. We got a pros and cons set up here. I'd love to see it. Pros. Good visuals. Great animations. Medium to good controls. Great voice acting. Okay, fair enough. Roaming around the city is fun for the first hour or so. Okay, I, I guess you can call that a, a compliment to it. I, kind of a con as well. He's, he's kind of mixed the two here. Fan service here and there. Cons. Skippable story at best. Don't really 
agree with that. At best, by the way. That's, uh, yeah, that's a bit mad. Generic epic music. That is an interesting phrase. See, normally you, you just see people say generic music, but this guy's went with the generic epic music. Oh, okay. Only a single track is easy to remember, and only because it is on a constant loop while roaming the city, and because it just sucks arse. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, that, that caught me off guard, I'm not gonna lie. That, that came out of left field, I didn't see that one coming. That was a stray right there, that was a fucking stray. Horrible, horrible grind fest of a game. Catch all the pigeons to get nothing in return. Well, I do think you would get XP and, you know, if you want to plant them trophy, you could go out your way to do that, but... Take a picture of 30 buildings. Activate 20 communication towers. Clear out 20 bases that have around 5 waves times 15 of stupid bad guys each. Beat 20 almost identical challenges. Complete 2 million of quote unquote puzzles for the mentally challenged 3 year olds. Exciting. I don't think this guy's the biggest fan of the side missions. I'm kind of getting that impression. Listen, the side missions aren't amazing in this game. But honestly, while playing the game, I didn't mind them. Mostly because of how fun the actual mechanics of moving around a Spider-Man is and swinging about makes the majority of the side missions fun. Even if the concept of the side missions aren't that fun but for the most part i didn't mind the side missions personally but i can see why people would have a problem with them okay this review is kind of taking a turn here i don't know what has happened not fucking hell at first i gave this game a five but have lowered the score while i was writing this 200 word essay in quotation marks now he's just going against himself i i don't know what's going on here i think this guy's having a mental breakdown i wonder if the score is low enough okay now he's talking to himself in the review <laughs> mid review I, d I don't know what's going on i have made a mistake by buying this pile of shit. This has really taken a turn, man. Like, I did not think it was going down this road after seeing the pros. I thought he was going to be kind of fair. But now, when we got to cons, it took a dark turn. If you are a Spider-Man fan, it will be a 6 or 7 game. Otherwise, skip this cheap cash grab. That was a roller coaster of a review right there. That was something. Honestly, this guy might be on something with the story because that review was a bigger roller coaster of emotions than maybe the story of Spider-Man. He might have swayed me a wee bit here, you know. Alright, next review. Two out of 10. I hate this game. Hate, hate, hate it. Nothing but unrelenting Twitch combo moves. For some reason my mind just went to the actual company Twitch there for a second. Thought they were coming out of fighting classes or some shit. No time to breathe or recover during action sequences even at the easiest level. Complete frustration. Alright, this is interesting because I actually thought Spider-Man, even on normal difficulty, was a fairly easy game. I'm interested to see what this person says. For calibration purposes, I'm in my 50s but play a lot of PS4 games. Okay, for calibration? Why is he saying for calibration purposes? Such a weird way to phrase it. Alright, so he's in his 50s, but he still plays games. Fair. Loved Witcher 3, Assassin's Creed Origins, Rising Zero Dawn, Uncharted 4, God of War. Love open world games in general, fighting is fine. Hate Twitch games that require teen level reflexes and muscle memory of large numbers of combo moves. This guy's played Horizon Zero Dawn, and I would say that game is more challenging in terms of combat, and you need more reflexes for it than Spider-Man. Is that a crazy take? I don't know. <laughs> no sneaking or different strategies here, just full-on speed and combo moves. That's this game. I mean, there are stealth sections in the game where you have to play as MJ, which are parts of the game that I personally don't like, which this guy probably would. There is like a full stealth system where you can go up behind people and take them down and quickly get away. There's even parts of the game that you have to stealth, so I don't know. I mean, the stealth could be a lot better in the game, but it is there. It is a strategy you can't use. Hate this game. I wish I bought it on DVD so I could have some resale value. Couldn't even make it through the first boss level without yelling curses at the damn TV. More power to you if you're half my age and like this sort of thing. I can understand that. Reflexes get slower as you age, which is why I don't play PvP anymore, but I sure as hell wish I'd seen warnings about the gameplay when reading all the glowing reviews before I paid full price for this. I mean, fair enough. You know, he's, he's respectful at the end of the review and everything of other people's opinion, which is a lot more that I can say for most reviews that I look at in these videos. But at the same time, I don't know how he's played through Horizon Zero Dawn and loves that game, but hates this game and finds it too difficult. It's a bit strange, to be honest. Yeah, that's uh, an interesting insight on in the game, I guess. Alright, 3 out of 10 on this one. Another PlayStation exclusive that relies on heavy marketing and blind hype. Perfect start to the review. So I'm sure this review is going to be really non-biased to that fact that it's a PlayStation exclusive game, you know 
Um, I'm sure he's just mentioned it just to say it. You know, it is unbelievable how a game with so many flaws gets a pass and even scores a nine on this page. But this is the world we live in, right? Yo, this guy's going Joker mode right now. A world full of casual sheep consuming every garbage the media throws at their face. Anyways, I'll make this quick. Now, yes, the game is beautiful and yes, the web slinging is good when it wants to. But what is there beyond that? I just imagine this guy like sitting in his room thinking about this review in like a philosopher way. <laughs> He's asking himself the real questions here. His hands are like in that exact pose that like the fucking Mr. Burns pose. Just thinking about what he's gonna say here. We do live in a society. A game that shamelessly rips off an already old and boring formula with scripted boss battles and a ton of QTEs. What's worse is how it repeatedly ruins its flow by forcing you to play as MJ and Miles in some of the worst stealth sequences I've seen in gaming. You know, that is the one critique that I think is really fair. Literally nobody cares about those characters. I, I don't know about that, right? That's the, the characters are fine. It's just, you know, the actual gameplay of the character. But sure, they're trash, period. Lastly, outside of the Taskmaster challenges, every other side activity is boring as fuck. Chasing pigeons, taking photos, and running through clouds. You can argue about the base capturing horde mode, but to me, all it does is make the already repetitive combat more repetitive. You know, not liking the side missions, of the game for the most part fair not for everyone i personally found them fine because i was really into the game really into the web swinging which a lot of these involved in the combat and all that stuff so i enjoyed it this guy found the combat repetitive that's one thing i disagree on a bit more but the rest of it you know fine it really pains me to see how gaming has turned out to be today but what hurts me the most is seeing other games like dragon quest 11 get overshadowed by casual trash such as this well it is what it is i guess high five to all the real gamers out there though. The ones that don't bite on the overmarketed casual garbage and know what the uh real the real gaming is about. Why is he censored it? I have no idea why that's censored, but another theme with these kind of reviews where they do actually point out stuff that I would say isn't perfect with the game. They don't mention any of the good stuff or any of the major stuff, such as the story in a single player game that has no multiplayer in it. Nothing really mentioned that. Only thing he really mentioned was the negative of it of where you had to play MJ. You mentioned scripted boss battles and a ton of QDEs. You mentioned the side activity more than the main activity. I don't know. I mean the points he did make weren't terrible. This is one of the better reviews out of the lot. It, it still lacks a lot. It's just you know out of the other ones we've looked at this one at least talks about stuff that is that is objectively not that perfect about the game. Amazing review uh, 10 out of 10. Makes me want to watch the Joker. Alright I think that enough reviews. I think we've went through quite a few good ones in this video, I would say. Tell me what you think of the Spider-Man game in the comments. Do you think some of these reviews are right? Do you think they're completely wrong? Tell me what you think in the comments. Like the video if you did enjoy. And also comment down below what other games you want me to do this with. Obviously, the other two I had in that vote was Last of Us and God of War 2018. But there could be a lot more that I'm just not thinking of that you might want to see. That's about it and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.